Hello and welcome to another episode of The Modern Nerd. I am Sir Slice. I'm Smerchandise. And I'm GJC. And we are, as always, massive nerds. Now, we're coming back to you from a brief hiatus. Everyone went away. We've it was been not kind brief. of working. It's not it, on a on a on a month and a half long hiatus, but we've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, rebranding, trying to come up with new things for the new year and stuff to bring you for new content. We're very excited about that, but we will get to that on another show. Today we have uh, our end of the year, end of phase four, just wrapping up everything that's happened uh, in Marvel. So you know, uh, before we start all that, you know, uh, we're gonna do a holiday episode, but. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas, uh, 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 Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, we're happy you're happy. So enjoy that and have a wonderful new year. And and as always, thank you everyone for joining us this past year or so that we've been doing the podcast here on GJC's uh, channel or if you're watching us on YouTube. We're very grateful to have you. And thank you, Dan. And thank you, George. It's been a blast. And we're having a good time doing it. So in the uh, uh, sanctity of time, let's get into it. So before we, again, there's so many befores. Before this, before that, uh, George was not with us when uh, uh, Smirch and I did um, okay. our last two reviews, really, but Black Panther, mm -hmm. I don't think George watched Black Adam. So uh, mm -hmm. we're going to give George the, the floor for a couple minutes here and let him give us his take on take Wakanda forever. So, so just let us long. know how you feel it. Let's go. Um, I think... I enjoyed it. I don't. I didn't go into it with very high expectations. It did like it's 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 again once again it it did what it needed to do. You know, it did a really good job of paying its respects, um, but also maybe to the effect. I, I you want to say like if 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 it was in a box by itself and outside stuff didn't matter and you watched the movie by itself without knowing any of the context behind it and the real life ramifications you could almost say something felt like it was, it was missing throughout the whole entire film. Sure. Something felt like it was missing the whole entire film. And, but what was funny is that was the whole point. Like, something was supposed to be feel like it was missing. And it was him. Yeah. It, he was there and he wasn't there. Like, every moment where you, you, you felt an anticipation of something wanting to some, uh, something to happen, that was his, that was his line. That was his... his his presence that was him being there there was a lot of silence in that film there was a lot of parts where it was just like quiet and they were just doing things and i think in many ways it felt like in those silent moments you could feel chadwick boseman and you could feel the character you could feel the missing piece that that family and those characters were trying to portray you know and those actors themselves because they probably felt his presence throughout the whole film too and the the need for him to still want to be there and to fit to kind of it felt like they were picking up pieces in real life and pieces during the film as characters as well, you know, yeah. and trying to just make this work and continue on without him. And I think they did a good job, you know, and um, yeah, it wasn't the, of course it wasn't like a, we'll talk about our favorite films. It wasn't my favorite film or favorite thing of the thing, but I think it, it did what it needed to do. You know, that's about it. Yeah. Not much yeah, to say, George. It's pretty much what we we discussed last time so yeah. i think we yeah. this is if i, I didn't know anything, anything about it i would have been like something's weird about this whole film or something's yeah. missing yeah. this whole entire film right. something I, there's always this need of like uh like so, like an extra uh something would have something needed to be in this scene or in this line to make it just a little bit more perfect and that's when i realized it was like man it's him like George, if you have a chance to check out our review, uh, you, you will see me say almost verbatim what you said. Wow. Uh, I, uh, I purposely didn't. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, much as mature about it, uh, certainly. I was much more like, no, I want to fail. fail. Like, you know, <laughs> I was like, if you're going to if you're going to do that, then fill the gaps. Don't leave us hanging with like, we get it. We lost it. We don't need to be reminded. But yeah, but basically, yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, yeah. So that was it. it was it was, a, it was a solid outing. It was a very good movie. Yeah, yeah. it did. I, what, it, we, it, it did everything agree. that I expected it could. Yeah. You know, I didn't expect too yeah. much of it, and didn't everything I needed it to do. So I'm okay. Yeah, and it's a good yeah. quote unquote passing of the torch. You know, and she's a perfect. Yeah. She and I'm also like hats off to like Michael B. Jordan because like there's always been talk of wanting how great he did and how in many ways how he carried the first film actually 
with like even Chadwick Boseman is yep. going, you know, you don't have a great hero film without a great villain usually, you know, or a good like antagonist, you know, and some of the um, better Marvel films are complex antagonists. I would say like one of the interesting ones that we've seen more of is like Zemo is a great example of that. Like, you know, a yeah. complex one who you are like, you can actually sympathize realistically in the movie. for. Yeah, yeah, in the movie. movie. Yeah. And in also so. in, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Good. All right, so <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about phase four. There have been a lot of things that happened in the last year, two years, <sighs> from 2020 to 2022. So before we dive into that, I'm going to give everyone a list of things that happened. Oh, now, my God. We're, <laughs> we're not going to break down every movie. We're not going to break tight. down every show. <laughs> we will have... I will have stuff on the social media, so if you want more of our lists and our rankings, just keep an eye on, on the socials for There's that. There's a lot we'll, of we'll things. We'll have that out for you. Here we go. In order of appearance, WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, Black Widow, What If, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Hawkeye, Spider-Man No Way Home, Moon Knight, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Miss Marvel, Thor Love and Thunder, She-Hulk, Werewolf by Night, and Wakanda Forever to end Phase 4. So those are all the things that happened in Phase 4 in the last two years. Now, I did, we did talk a little bit uh, before this about the um, uh, Guardians holiday special. I don't really know what phase that falls in, so we'll probably talk about that in our next little holiday episode that we're going to do, just as a fun little piece. Um, we'll call it the first thing of Phase 5. I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll call it that for argument's sake at the moment so we're not like i said we're not going to talk about everything we're going to talk about our favorites our least favorites our surprised and our biggest uh disappointments so overall what was our least favorite thing that we saw um must uh two of us agree um damn why don't why what's your least favorite thing that happened in the last two years it's really a tie between the thing that we're going to talk about and the thing yeah. I'm going to mention. Yeah. Uh, I just, um, for me, Hawkeye just missed the mark on everything. There was no, there was oh. no, hey, that was good. Uh, except for, uh, I will say, which George will talk about, uh, the, the, the brief appearance from Florence Pugh, which was a nice little, uh, you know, was not even the light in a dark hallway. It was more like a... Uh, uh, a light in a, a, a dark, in a, lots of dark, like oil sludge. Uh, I still couldn't even really see it because it was. I felt like you were so, in the sewers, like just turning yeah, around a lot. Yeah, not even that. Like, oh, like is a that dungeon. a light? Oh, <laughs> that was, he was a seconds. dungeon crawler. I, it, it was, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it just, I, they, they turned what I think uh, is, in my opinion, I've said this before, and I'll go on record again in saying that the portrayal of the Kingpin uh, in um, Dare, the original Daredevil series by the Vincent actors, D'Onofrio. Vincent D'Onofrio is, in my opinion, the second best portrayed villain in any comic book, TV, or movie. And they made him just kind of like a... He was still kind of menacing, but he's like dressed in like Hawaiian shirts, Hawaiian shirts in the middle of winter. <laughs> I, I don't really understand what that was, um, but uh, that was just like kind of that was more 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 or less the shit icing on an already sh uh, fucking piece of shit cake. Uh, this the first episode did nothing to inspire me. I I don't I I don't like Haley Steinfeld. I don't think she I think she was just kind of there. Um, Jamie Renner kind of in real life, probably also is tired about his role as he is just in general, like in real life, like the like yeah. guy's done. He is done, which is kind of signifying, I guess. Um, I think it picked up for, for this episode, but yeah, I, sure. it just sure. didn't do it for me. Missed the mark on everything. That's fair. Um, uh, overall, I believe uh, our unanimous least favorite thing that has happened, and pretty much everyone's unanimous least favorite thing that I know of is Chloe Zhao's Eternals, which is unfortunate because Chloe Zhao is a very wonderful director, and they had a good writing team and a good production team and everything. It just it tried to do too much, and it really did not land. Now, I will say this. I rewatched Eternals uh, in the last couple weeks, mm. and um, it has moments that I think I was toying with this idea of just like 
recording it and editing it out all the bullshit and just making it an hour and a half long movie and it would be great you know i mean there's so many things that are cool you should do it right there's there's cool things that happened but there's just so much weighing down this movie just so many slow character builds so many things that just who gives a shit you know like like i just don't it, it didn't land with the romances and it didn't you know the 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 pressure that they were seeing it was just it didn't feel like a marvel movie which i think was the point they were trying something new which is as we will go into all of this the the overall idea of phase four was kind of like a testing phase sort of um but there was so many things they tried it didn't land it just was long and boring and slow and the characters were stupid so you know it, it will we see more of them probably will they be redeemed i hope so i, I um... hope so Someone accidentally confirmed it already. Eternals mm. two. I forget some actor. Wonderful. Was, yeah, uh, one of the actors. I forget who it was. I would. I would have rather it's had probably um, Mark Ruffalo. A TV, <laughs> a TV show would would be more fitting for them. A, a Disney Plus show. George, yeah. you agree with with Eternals is not great. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not not good at all. Like yeah, I, I would, I would have rather they just We've, forgot about it. Yeah, I agree. We've talked about this in ad nauseum in many other episodes. Yeah, I'm not so going to really, I don't need to go it, into it, but like, I just don't know why they made this film the way they it's did. It's too bad. It, it's at, at its core, I think it's a good story. And then, and like, the just, are visually it, you know what it was? It was like someone gave these people some money and they were like, we're going to swing for the fences and try to get some like pretty decent like well-known stars and a large cast like ensemble cast and with the hopes that these like good actors because some i would say the majority of them are all very good actors like come together hopefully yeah. we can make some magic with whatever we were given regardless of the quality of the script or storyline that like them being good actors can like invoke some form of emotional attachment to this film you know you that in itself yeah. is like just kind of the premise Add to that the weight of all the extra things that they were trying to do because Marvel had like this initiative to be more inclusive. So they're like trying to tick off a bunch of boxes. Like it became a problem in itself. Sure. You know, and I think hmm. I think what's made Marvel kind of interesting, and we've said this before, is every single every single show and every single uh movie is an example of their twist on a certain genre of of television or film oh. I, I don't understand what the genre of Eternals this is was. supposed to be an epic like like a lord of the rings like right a, like a space epic sure which is, like, yeah, already, which is terrible because the thing like, is is like if you if, isn't that supposed to be your thing i'm sorry to say marvel isn't that supposed to be your thing like nice. an epic Hello, you guys are Marvel. You make comic yeah. books that are epics and yeah. artistically beautiful things and beautiful storylines. Isn't started. that like yep. you're trying to uh, you're trying to do your version of a Lord of the a, a twist of yeah what you of yourself? Is but that George like is what right. am I getting that right? Like that's what's they, wrong with Eternals. They not only were trying to do too much for a movie from a narrative perspective and with too many characters as well. Way they couldn't many they were trying to do too many genres like they couldn't decide like which what they were and what you got was obviously there was something there i think there was but it was a hodgepodge of literally like it was like there was like eight different directors pulling in eight different directions and what we yeah. got was just very yeah. and I'll, i hate this brown. i don't know and i just don't understand we we could we could go on hating this forever yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna move on we're done. what was dan what was your favorite show Disney Plus show that came out for Marvel Phase Four. It's very close. It's very, very, very close for me. But uh, it's yeah. gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna go to Loki for me. Yeah. Um, it's a good pick. Uh, the only reason I'm not saying WandaVision is because uh, Loki just, I don't know. I, I, it was. In many ways, I the 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 cinephile in me wants to go for WandaVision just because of what it achieved from just a show television standpoint was phenomenal. Uh, Loki, I just I think more of a preference. I just I love Tom Hiddleston. Um, this show gave me a lot. What I, I mean, it wasn't everything wasn't perfect, but I was glued to the TV from front to back. And this and uh, 
maybe i don't know i don't know if we'll ever see a tv show have this big of stakes in the marvel universe as a whole again maybe we will i don't know but seeing that i think was a big factor for me as well and it just it was just i you know yeah. the the moment when he got uh what's the word they used when he, you, you, you sent you, they would kill them they would ice them whatever and he got dusted or whatever i was like what how what and anyway um very yep. good show very George? good show I changed my last show. minute back to what I originally oh. said, which is She-Hulk. Uh, okay. Solid. Solid. Why give us a short why? She-Hulk, I mean, it, I mean it, it, it's the, it's like, you like it in many ways because it's like the Deadpool of, of, it's the only taste of any type of fourth wall break we've had. Like, real fourth way. It's like a new era for Mar Marvel in the sense that, like, they can, like, go outside themselves and, like... And it, it's the only sign that I've had, like, on screen that, like, they've actually even took any time to listen to what fans and, like, genuinely try to be like, hey, this is our sign. We're, like, we're watching you. Like, you're watching us. We're also watching what you're saying about us. Like, and here's the proof because we're going to put it in the show and, like, be like, hey... We understand, like, you know, and like they, I think the show, yeah, that that's in itself is historic. More yeah, like yeah. maybe more so than anything else, because you have to think about the fact that this whole entire like thing doesn't have like a doesn't have like an Avengers moment. You know, this phase didn't have like a let's all come together. Kind, it's kind of did kind of, little small parties but no like Not really no like yeah, they had no, no like class reunion like let's go moment because it's you know it's that phase and also you know but they had little you know parties like hey we're doing like something on the west coast or something on the east coast you know like but <laughs> this one was kind of interesting because this show also did a little bit of that you saw some people and you know yeah and yeah. that's that's kind of the tone of the whole entire phase anyways all right, True. that's it. I, I've talked want, about She-Hulk and why it's great before. So Yeah, we, you go check out any one of our numerous She-Hulk episodes, and, yeah. and you'll get a lot more from all of us on that one. Um, my favorite show was WandaVision. Mm -hmm. um, that one just resonated Solid with me thing. a lot. Um, yeah. it, it, and and not, not just for, like, the beginning where it jumped and, and kind of really kind of dove into the differences of, of genres from eras and all the different types of shows and so sitcoms beautiful. and stuff. But, like... The overall message of grief and 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 you know getting through something and and like all of it just it really came together in the end it it ended well you know it had a couple of weird little things but like it really the whole show as and and not to say anything like you know Loki didn't do that but I think for me WandaVision hit harder Loki still did great and and it's again it was really close because Loki is a, a bit more of like a fun. In it, you know, uh, romp, whereas WandaVision is a little bit heavier, and, and that really just kind of sat with me. You know, like I went back and, and re watched parts of, of WandaVision, and, and, and I think I watched it all again. So it's, you know, it's the only one that really brought me back again. So that was just uh, uh, superb for me. It, it hit home, and, you know, I love TV, I love movies. We all do. Obviously, we wouldn't be doing this, this show for you if we didn't have a love for it, and that really really spoke to me on that one um i think the next one's going to be a really uh, uh short discussion because we've talked about it before unfortunately you cannot go back and watch our old review of this i've taken it down because it was such a disaster in editing and everything but the favorite movie for phase uh, uh, four was uh, a Spider-Man No Way Home for all three of us. I'm just going to throw that out there for everybody. We had a really long, it was, a, it was like a two hour long. We had a before the movie, we had an after the movie, we had different scenes when we were talking, but that second scene had no audio. So unfortunately you can't go back and watch our old review, um, but we we were all just so like awestruck by this this movie when it happened that it it, we like we bumbled through like we couldn't get over how great we and how good of a feeling it was to really truly say what we loved about it in the in the podcast like i went back and watched it and everything and like we loved it but we couldn't tell you why we loved it other than like a couple of moments where we were just like and it was absolutely hilarious to hear us bumble through that review but 
I have watched that movie five times already, and I absolutely love it. They re-released it in theaters, and I didn't go see it because the movie theaters in England suck. In my city, suck. Uh, but they added more footage, so when that comes out, I'm going to rewatch it again. But this movie, for me, everybody who knows me, Spider-Man is my jam, um, and it ticked every single box that I've ever wanted in a Spider-Man, in a comic book movie for me. You know, this is like one of my favorite overall Marvel movies to date. There's some really good ones, don't get me wrong, but this is one of my favorites and I'm biased because I've been reading Spider-Man since I was eight years old. So, you know, um, yeah, No Way Home is, is I think one of our overall favorites and most favorite. There may be some others that we can tuck into the overall favorite and, and, and conversations, but anyone have more to say on, on Spider-Man No Way Home? Just that in a world where in a world the, 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 in a world where the amount of spider-man content there's more been more spider-man content than any other comic book content like thrust upon so us happy and even with all that this movie just was the best spider-man movie ever made uh and it it does. I, I literally I feel like like I'm being transported back to the time we were trying to talk about it because I'm just like, I, I don't it would it would it's so good. It did everything. It did everything you wanted. I, everything was good it was about better it. than some I, Avengers. Yeah, most Avengers movies, I'd say yeah, it's better than most uh, Avengers. movies. Yeah. I, and that's I'm saying something because you know that's it, um, a lot of stuff they put into those. And I'm My, sad because John Watts is not doing Fantastic Four anymore. If you, I'm like, yeah. if you think about it, like Avengers if you count how many films lead up to each individual Avengers film, right? Uh, you could say About the amount six. of Spider-Mans that ha movies had to been watched equals to the same amount as No Way Home. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. In order for you to get to No Way Home, you had to watch, yeah, you gotta watch like six all movies. the Tobys, the Andrews, <laughs> and all the ones that Tom is into. Yeah. Including Plus, the really non-Spider-Man can... ones like Civil War. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. You're, you're watching a ton of movies to get a lot of these references. Yeah. Which, and then Avengers. Uh, <laughs> Both Avengers. <laughs> yeah. Right. At time of recording, I don't know if you guys have saw this, and we'll talk about it because uh, uh, we're recording again later this week, but at time of recording right now, they today have released the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse trailer, and if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's, it's yeah, that's all I'm going to say. We're not going to do that now. We'll talk about that next time on, on the holiday one to, to tuck cool. it in and everything. Um, so, um, what was something that surprised you guys? Like, what did you, like, of, of, and we'll talk about the overall in a minute here, but, like, what was it that you were least excited about? Not least excited, but you were like, ah, maybe. And then you by the end of the movie or show, you're like, yeah, I, I, that was way better than I anticipated. I mean, George touched on it already, She-Hulk. I was not uh, expecting much, and it, you know, in a way, it didn't... There was not a lot of action, which the younger me would be disappointed about, but I'm not disappointed by that. It it was good, and yeah, the, the whole... God, the, the talking to the audience, uh, you know, I didn't know how she would do, and she did great. And mm -hmm. it was so, like, the, up, I, like... It, there's no way, like, they plan those episodes when you think about it. And it's almost as if those episodes were responding to the criticisms Life. that were happening before they, the criticisms they even happened. Dude, that's How some do they know? Shit. That's some real, like, that's some real, because they know, man. I don't know. They Kevin just knows. Just Kevin know. knows. <laughs> How would they know? They're not going to know. How would they know? <laughs> they Kevin know? knows. They, they did, and it, they, they knew exactly what people were going to say, and they mocked them. And this is, and it's not even like they're responding to it. It's like they knew exactly what they were going to say, and they responded to it. And that, to me, was incredible and uh, deserving of a round of applause in yeah. itself. On top of an already pretty great and fun romp. Uh, though you, you never fun thought you show. were going <laughs> to <laughs> like, you could. I could never have predicted most of the things that happened in that show. And that's <laughs> saying something because I feel like these days predicting what happens in Marvel movies is pretty predictable, uh, and not in this one. 
No, like what? <laughs> She's gonna spend an entire episode like in group therapy chatting with these guys. Like you're it up. Oh, you're joking, surely. Nope, nope. That's exactly what happens, and it's good. It's good. So props tomorrow for stepping yeah. outside the box a little and uh, trying something. New. It's a real comedy. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a sitcom. It, it, they made yeah. a sitcom, which is solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My uh, biggest surprise for me was. Uh, Werewolf by Night. If you haven't seen it, definitely spend 55 minutes and go oh. watch this movie show thing. Um, it, you know, from the trailer, I knew I was going to see it because it just it looked cheesy and campy and stupid, but it turned out to be very good. Um, uh, just a fun, enjoyable, good story, uh, interesting characters, and I like. I left wanting to be like I want to know how they tie these into the rest like what what are they going to do with these characters because unlike some of you know I think Moon Knight is the only one that's not going to tie in I'm like well, this is interesting because it's the first like supernatural spooky kind of thing that they're doing as opposed to everything else is magical based but it's 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 different you know for this for this feeling of when there's monsters and things like that so you know um i i definitely i want more of it i enjoyed it a lot more than i anticipated i would and uh yeah go definitely uh go watch this it's it's a good good writing good stuff so and and the black and white is fantastic and they did it stylized very well um george i didn't understand the assignment for this question so originally i thought of like what's you the biggest the question what's like the biggest surprise the yeah, like what's the biggest surprise and i was like well my biggest surprise is like i thought florence Pugh was like a breath of fresh air so i chose an actress she i was like Which surprised at how well sh- i was surprised at how well she like did with what she was given and like the time she was given and the context of being in corona and then her film being the like all that like everything that she had to That's go through right. and then coming back to even do something in in a admittedly not so good tv show but like still doing what like doing a great job of it and being a meme and just like owning every single scene she's in you know like she has that presence and i'm happy that she's part of the mcu and i look forward to what she does next so i thought it was about an actress but if we're going to talk about a show i would say it's what if what if caught me out of nowhere like a quick jab from left I was looking right and it hit me. I was like, oh, okay, something to like tie us over until a new live action show like comes up, comes on. No, it was a show in, of epic proportions. Key to like whatever you could say Loki is actually in that way. Like the f- things that happen in that show, you could say arguably affect the qu- great multiverse of the MCU on the scale that Loki did, you know, because it's yeah. it happened. It, it's canon. Yeah. We know it's okay. canon. It happened. Yeah. And we know it's canon because we've seen someone like Agent Carter become Captain Carter in, in a live action film. Like that that is the breaking of realities that's yeah. part of the story of, of what's happening in the MCU. So I think I had no idea it would it would be that big of a part. And also like in many ways it, it shows the scale of of stories that can be told on animation with like half the budget that you probably could never do with twice the budget on a live action thing. Right. So they probably saved money on it and they told a great story. And I would say it's the best Marvel animation. Animation is expensive. It is expensive, but I mean, it's not as expensive as doing like live action, you know? Yeah, that's, that's fair. And you don't have to bring all the actors back. No, you don't, you know? And I would say finally that, um, it's probably like my favorite Marvel cartoon since like X Men '97, like the original. Ooh, like she showcased, okay. and I really liked Earth's Mightiest Heroes. But that was an excellent show. The, I really Very liked Earth's Mightiest Heroes, but this might even top that in that in the Marvel animated film a show like or or film or whatever. I we'll really have to, just we'll have to do beautifully that. done. It's so just so beautiful. Oh, or just, let's just do a podcast about great like it, like intro yeah, songs to, sh- to <laughs> two of the best come on two, two of the best one, i like to include the justice league unlimited oh. crazy guitar riff as well yeah. we will fight as one. Oh, oh man i just watched so some good. i was just pulling stuff from uh earth's mightiest heroes to to use in a video and so i look forward to that but i, I do just love i really jammed heroes. out to that to that theme song real hard recently um 
that's it. That's all I can, that's it. it. And the voice I, acting, I, of course, is great because it, most of it, I believe, is original actors. Well, what I mean, there's if one or two most a, people who weren't. Yeah. What if it would have been a close second for me? It's it was I I was so pleasantly surprised. I thought we were just going to get a bunch of single yeah. episode things, and that's cool, and I enjoyed them. And then to have it actually, some of the things kind of come, come together, together in yeah. the end. I was like, oh, shit, here we go. Oh, okay, like, I take that back. You know how I said She-Hulk like, was the first thing that broke weeks. the fourth wall? Actually, What If kind of did that, too, because Jeffrey Rush's character, or not Jeffrey, Jeffrey, uh, what's his name? Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. Jeffrey Wright's yes. character, ta- as the you know, as the watcher, yeah. talks to the audience, too. That's different, though. You that, think that's different? They are a narrator. I mean, that's that's their role, is to be outside of the universe talking to to the reader yeah. or the watcher. So How do you? Oh, hey. it makes no. It does break the wall technically, but they are outside oh. of the universe, which is interesting. Which An is interesting because he's a do. watcher. Yeah. Oh man! Mm. But it's not the first time we saw the watcher. That's true. Or watchers. Watchers. We saw them in Thor. Uh, um, Ragnarok. Stan was talking to them because he was lost. No. Oh yeah, the post credit scene. Yeah, yeah. Was that the post credit scene? I don't remember which one it was. Was that Thor or was that was that Guardians? I don't, I don't I think remember. it was Thor. It was Guardians. No, it, was it was Guardians where they're jumping from from really far away and they're jumping through yes. the those those holes. Yes. And and you see him on the planet talking about to to two of... giant and then you see the yeah, their ship fly watchers. By. Guardians. It's two Guardians two. Excuse me. Um, okay. Anyways, we're diving. Last bit. Last bit, and I don't want to get too deep into this part here, but our biggest disappointments, because we've talked about these on previous shows. My biggest disappointment, unfortunately, and I'm just I feel bad saying it because I really did want to like this movie a lot, was was Thor Love and Thunder. Like I wanted to like this because Thor Ragnarok was one of my favorites going in. So I was so hyped for this. And it just it in if even if it's in comparison, even in not comparison, it's it's not my it's my biggest disappointment because I was excited for it. It's not the worst of these yeah. movies. It's just what I was most disappointed about. I will say I did I did try and I did rewatch that also recently, and uh, yeah, it it's it, it's too campy. It's just too campy, like for most of it. But I won't get into it. Go watch our Thor: Love and Thunder it, breakdown. It, it didn't. There's so much I could get. Yeah, I could get into it. I'll, yeah, I'll just yeah. say that it it was mine as well. Um, I just. It, you, sometimes you have to be serious and you have to actually be serious and not be like awkward or like make jokes. Like that's it's, not, I, it takes you out of the moment. I don't get how he can do two movies with the same character and they just feel so different. Well, it made me think about Ragnarok a little bit. And honestly, there were the, the, the serious moments in that war. I feel landed a little bit, but very quickly followed up by shenanigans. And I think he just felt like it worked. So he didn't like, he wanted to keep that up. I, I'm he not really sure. There's too many shenanigans yeah. though. Many shenanigans. You know, it's just, it was, yeah. there was a, there was a heart to the old. Plus it's mostly because there was no villain. There was no real villain. It was yeah, just he was barely there. gore and it was useless. And it was one and of the Christian, best actors another, of our another, generation. Yeah. Wasted. Wasted performance by an fantastic I'm gonna, actor. I'm going to cut off real quick. Cause, cause, this phase, they have done something that they really didn't do in the past, and it bothers me, is they're buying actors in this phase. And if you, they made actors in the previous phase, which really bothers me that, that like, going into a lot of these movies, like, yes, Mark Ruffalo, people knew him. He wasn't a huge actor, you know? Uh, nobody knew who, who Chris Hemsworth was. You know, RDJ's yeah. comeback story yeah. of, of a lifetime. Chris Evans wasn't a very big actor going into this. He's done some movies, you know? ScarJo is ScarJo. She had some pull, but, like, this, like, elevated her 10 times to where she was. Like, you know, you're making these these people. They're becoming, you know, Tom Hiddleston, Um, Like, these are all a lot of relatively unknown people who are embodying these characters. And instead, this phase, they've bought talent and they're becoming they're they're becoming the the worst thing in in sports is is the Yankees and the Patriots. And they're just throwing money at people. And they're like, we'll buy the best talent. 
and you're gonna love us because that's what we are and i'm like i'm starting to hate you because that's what you do yeah so you know i mean well, you, they they got angelina jolie and they're you know harry they're bringing, like all these people harry styles and they're you know they're throwing these actors in there there's some new characters that are, are i'm excited for and the the young cast and everything but you know you start to see this this happening more know, and more in, in these shows so I hopefully think that's... Hopefully Sorry. it doesn't stay because Eternals I, is the one that that does that the most. Right. They just bought the cast, and it's like that was a bad idea. I mean, that's low on the totem pole for what's going wrong with this phase. I, I think it, you know what I mean. It, it, the story is first. It doesn't matter who's in there if they're decent enough. If they got the chops, they'll they'll, they'll it'll get done. You could have you know it, it's it's uh, it's too bad. I think I feel bad for some of these fine actors who finally got into the MCU only for them to have, you know, mediocre movie outings. It's it's a little bit of a shame, but whatever. I, I you know, yeah, this phase uh, is missing the mark overall, uh, in my opinion. God, you started it off so strong with, 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 with WandaVision and Loki right after it, and you're just like, wow, they're doing it. Like, this is happening. And then, I mean, after Shang-Chi, a noticeable dip. And I wonder if we, I mean, uh, No Way Home removed. Uh, I, I wonder, like, how we would have received some of these shows if they had come right after some, you know, if, if, if like, if, if She-Hulk or, or, uh, or Moon Knight or, or Miss Marvel had come out right after, like, the Avengers movies, I think they would have been torn to shreds, personally. Uh, I think our bar has been lowered a little bit by the point that these shows came out, and if they came out right after that amazing movie, or right after Loki or WandaVision, it would have been like, what is this? This is not the caliber of quality we've gotten used to. And so it's been a bit of an adjustment, and yeah. I we hear stories about like the the graphics uh, department being 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 forced to work uh, extra hours. We've I've heard multiple reports of Kevin Feige himself being spread too thin, too many things to focus on, less quality control, and as Tim has pointed out, like uh, on this fantastic uh, spreadsheet put together, there is twice as much content in this phase Which, alone yeah, than we'll anything else we've we've uh, put together not put together but like it, it's Close. just a lot it's a lot of which here's what he is referencing so uh going all the way back to the fine fine year of 2008 so sip your vintages from 2008 because that was a fantastic year because we had iron man but Phase one had six movies over the course of five years between 2008 and 2012. Phase two had six movies in the course of three years, 2013 to 2015. Phase three had 11 movies in four years. So they, they gave us a couple more years, one extra year on that one uh, from 2016 to 2019. Phase four had 16 things happen in two years two years that's seven movies eight tv shows and one special not including the guardians of the galaxy there is so much content that came out in two years so that kind of is my next question do you feel well, wait there was a point first they I, I don't know if it was feige but it was someone at marvel studios it might have been feige i'd have to find the tweet or statement that they made that they literally were like you know what you're right We've overdone it. We're going to, they literally said the words, we're going to focus on quality over quantity in the upcoming phases. I'm like, you just admitted to us what, that, like, you're like, sorry, Good. we just got really excited there and gave you Good. all the stuff. We were like a little I'm, kid in the candy shop. I want it all. And then, would you, would you rather not admit it? I no, mean, it's great. It's just, yeah. it's just funny to hear an exec admit that. You don't hear them admit their mistakes, which yeah, is something true. that I like about Feige. So if you see in 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 our uh, our fun overlay here, we have Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, who is our, our fun little background guide with us. And, 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 and it feels very much like that statement. In the, the season finale of She-Hulk, he it you know, it is revealed that the person running the show is just a machine, just churning out content out of a formulaic basis. This is what the people want, so this is what we're gonna give them. And they change that formula without within She-Hulk, which was monumental. But that really does actually 
very much so feel exactly like what phase four was a machine churning out content based off an ai making yeah. up a story that's what i was so, gonna say or do like you feel disappointment. that do you feel that the 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 disney plus shows added to or took away from the overall feel of the mcu did they bring enough to the table to justify cramming that much down our throat in two years Discuss. George? I was going to say that that's like kind of the segue that I was going to say is, or not segue, but like it would have been a good to connect it to what we are going to say next, but I think Disney Plus is a, it's a double-edged sword, you know? It gave us the ability to tell more stories or hear more stories and see more content, but it also like you said, it does spread the team a little bit too thin, it seems like. I think what was, I was going to say is what was great about this uh, phase is that like it opened the doors for a lot of a lot of people. I feel like it was the most inclusive phase that I've seen. You know, you saw more different types of faces and people and backgrounds and and ever than ever before. Um, on the other side of that is like Marvel, like any big company now has like they have the advantage of being like first on arrival, right? So their product at home, they built up in like, you know, domestic markets was quote unquote Western markets. They've gotten all their money and all their stuff that they built earlier on. And now they're such a big company a big conglomerate with Disney that they have the ability to push to like secondary markets and emerging markets really well too. So you could see it as like a, like a business strategy which is both you know it's it's both it's the fact that they can be a more inclusive but they also make more money by including more people because they can push their product onto a different market that is now opening up and now that they have that big brand of disney behind them they their reach is even more like larger and that's the same thing with disney plus so you know it's a good thing for them in the sense is business is booming and emerging right. markets is booming for them but it's also good for other people because it opens the doors for other people to be more inclusive in on screen as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you couldn't do that without Disney plus because Disney plus did pretty much half of the heavy lifting on that end on top of what was on the films. I mean, they did. I don't think you would almost all of it. Yeah. They did almost all the heavy lifting in that. If not, mo but, but like, you know, there are big films like Shang-Chi and, Stuff like that yeah. that were Eternal. very inclusive as well. Eternal. But the, and then that's the thing I didn't like. I would go back to disappointment is like when you try to check too many boxes, the, the result of which is like the Eternals. When the algorithm goes wrong, like that's what happens. So it goes to show that like they had to do a strong algorithm correction because whatever it is in their formula that they usually did, it didn't turn out well. Like something went wrong with the baking recipe for that. And it's yeah. obvious to everybody, you know? And there's nothing wrong with trying to check boxes. I think that's just the way films are made nowadays. But I think there needs to be like we know it's not just about the ingredients now, right? It's about how you put it together. Right. Like, yeah. you know, when you bake something, you just don't throw all the ingredients in a pan and then just throw it in the oven and hope to, you know, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something else. You can't yeah, just, yeah. you can't just throw it. Like imagine if you just dump sugar and flour and water and eggs and don't do anything and just throw it in the heat and then don't even check on it and take it out whenever you think it's ready. Like, It'd be disgusting. Like, that's really what happened. Like, don't you feel like... So, yeah. there's more to it than just the ingredients. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I hope we can look back on this phase and at least take away the fact that they're laying down some groundwork for the introduction of characters and uh, even sub-characters. Mm -hmm. Um and learn from the mistakes they've made. Um, I To answer your question, Tim, ultimately, I, yeah, I don't, I think they're adding to the MCU from a, um, an actual, like, structural standpoint in terms of 
who's this person and when this person pops up they can uh for whatever reason and we go oh hey we know that person like in that sense i think ultimately it's okay um but as in in terms of just turning on the tv (laughs) and going huh that was something i guess that passed the time that's not that's not what i've come to you know i've i haven't been actually excited to see anything marvel in a year uh maybe okay less than a year but going going you know like going to black panther like i if you, if I told my older self like pre Avenger like pre Avengers Endgame or Infinity War like yeah I'm not that excited to see Black Panther two uh, my old self would be like what why why not but it's like because I can't be because if I am I will just be let down yeah. uh, and <laughs> I that I don't want to feel that sinking feeling that I felt coming out of Thor coming out of Eternals coming out of Black Widow. And I mean, honestly, the other ones I felt coming out of going, well, those were better than the other ones. Yeah. Better than the other ones is not a goal you should aim for. But I understand that it's I do understand that what that was cinematically achieved in an Infinity War and Endgame is not something that you can revisit on a regular basis. I know that. And I and I would I hope that other Marvel fans know that. But you gotta, you gotta come like within the ballpark. You gotta still be in the football field. I disagree. I, I don't think they need to do Infinity War and Endgame all the that's time. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that's I'm saying they don't need to do that. But you gotta at least like, like be in, be in the parking lot. Don't be like, you know, a couple towns away thinking, yeah, like it's, it's just come close. Like I don't want. I don't want Infinity, Infinity uh, War and Endgame every time because that would set the bar way too high and it wouldn't make those special. And I, I recognize how special those movies were. But to go from that to way down here and then to just kind of like set our expectations at a healthy, like, you know, barely C passing grade, it's just not what we've come to expect. And yeah. I don't know if it's because of how spread thin people are, the execs, or that there's too much, or they just maybe maybe they're just resting on their laurels, thinking people will come back no matter what. I don't know. Whatever the case is, at they least will. we got some characters uh, that I mean, there's always going to be movies like this. We you know, and yeah. I've accepted that. I think we hit a pretty big golden age from uh, maybe even when you look back at the earlier phases and you, s- you say that Avengers: uh, Age of Ultron was one of the weaker movies. That's saying something because that movie was still pretty epic and still pretty good. And that's saying, speaking to the rest of the movies as a whole, um, in my opinion, I think the rest of the movies surrounding that movie were all so good that age of Ultron, like seemed kind of bad by comparison. And now we're in this phase where if we saw age of Ultron today, I feel like we'd be like, that was pretty fucking good. I mean, and it's, I'm saying if it was new and I just, I, I hope they're. It sounds like they're doing. A, uh, they're going back to not square one, but they're they're revisiting how they do things and, uh, you know, quality over quantity. We'll see. I'm my expectations are lowered, and I, you know, uh, I do think we'd had a great run of movies, um, back in phase three, and uh, we'll see. I'm yeah. we'll bringing my expectations. I I think to answer my own question, I I feel they the shows added volume um and introduced characters i i wouldn't say they added a real value unfortunately in this season there, there there's a few standouts that that were good and 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 added to it don't get me wrong but overall i i wouldn't put too much value into a lot of it you, you like you the first 3 you, you know, grade uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier wherever you want. The first three added to the narrative. They all added to the overall narrative, um, and it was it was solid. You know, I mean, um, you you didn't get. I guess you 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 get that in in Miss Marvel. You do, but it's it it's not the focus point of the show, and and that's fine. And, and it is what it is. You get that in in she, you don't really get that in She Hulk. She Hulk didn't set out to do that, so that's completely fine because that's what it was. 
Hawkeye just missed. I think it's a fun show, but it just was not. You know, if you look at it, it's just like a buddy show. Fine, yeah, it's but a buddy it, it didn't show. really. It just it just gave you a new character, and and that's kind of it, you know. And, and and it didn't really do a whole lot. Um, so you know, overall, the value was I, I feel diminished because of the quantity and and they've admitted that and they're going to uh, check that out going forward so um in the interest of time we're going to move on to the end of the show um we've got quantum mania is the next thing that that they're doing that i recall i believe ant-man and the wasp quantum mania comes out in february so you know keep your eyes on the horizon for that um keep your eyes on the horizon for some new videos from us i've been working on stuff but i've also been real lazy playing midnight suns and not working on stuff so it's it's a double-edged sword we'll you talk know? about I wanna... the guardians christmas special with our christmas episode yeah we'll we'll do that in the next one that, that you that's guys what see. prompted it because <laughs> we're like we should do yeah, a christmas pretty, episode pretty much <laughs> which we will because we missed our halloween one but we'll do that one we'll come around to that one we'll do we'll do halloween in february or some shit just crazy um so it, again um not asking everyone to do this but i would dan said it was a passable grade pretty much is what this phase was it was like a c c minus kind of area would probably be a general overall feel to to how this phase landed so take take for it what you will um stay tuned to all the socials i'm going to be posting lists of our gradings we do a grade system uh so keep an eye out on the modern nerd for that i'll have mine i'll have dan's and eventually george's when he fills his out um i will be going over some other things if you thought any of this stuff was crazy or if you have an opinion on any of our things or you want to add to our list feel free we want more comments we want more feel free to add it in um to the comments and like and subscribe as always um if you've had a good time we have been the modern nerd and thank you for watching <laughs>